Did you know that the IET's on-site guide includes examples of EICR codes? So in the on-site guide, we've got examples of C1, C2, C3, and FI, the ICR codes. Now these have been included in the on-site guide for some time. The reason why I want to talk about this is that EICR codes are still something of a topic of conversation. And the IET's ENT magazine recently wrote an article about um, the quality of electrical installation condition reports. And they spoke about inconsistencies in the reporting in those condition reports. Now the guys at eFix made a video about this and I recommend that you check that out. But I just wanted to share with you the fact that there are examples of ERCR codes in the on-site guide. And I think that this may get overlooked because when we get a new copy of the on-site guide when the latest amendment is published, I think we tend to be looking for the changes and I don't think we tend to look through the whole thing. But these have been here for some time. And so just to give you an example, it says examples of C1, it says uninsulated live conductors exposed uh, on a broken wiring accessory, uh, incorrect polarity at socket outlets, for, ex for example, live stroke CPC reversal, and item of metal work that has become live due to a fault. And then it goes on, um, there are some examples of C2, uh, and one is protective equipotential bonding not installed to extraneous conductive parts, residual current device RCD, 30 milliamps for additional protection, fails to operate in the required time, uh, and then we've got double pole fusing line and neutral so if you ever find a, a fuse in neutral that would be a code two um, then it says no connection to means of earthing at origin no cpc for a lighting circuit having class one uh, fittings accessories with exposed conductive parts and no rcd protection uh, 30 milliamp uh, rcd protection where socket outlets are likely to be used to supply equipment outdoors and then we've got some examples of c3 um, and so it says no rcd 30 milliamp for additional protection for socket outlets used within the building. And then earth leakage circuit breaker installed at the origin of a TT installation and no CPC for lighting circuit where only class two fittings accessories are installed. Then we've got some examples of FI, which obviously is further investigation. Um, so one we've got uh, a consume unit is fitted with devices and components of different manufacturer and may not meet the requirements of the uh, British standard and where it is suspected that devices within a consumer unit are subject to a product recall. So those are some good examples there. And even though I can think of lots more examples, I think the examples given there um, really um, give an idea as to the intent um, and, to, and what sort of things would be a C1, C2 or C3. One thing that I find quite interesting here is that it points out the differences between lack of RCD protection for equipment to be used outside and lack of RCD uh, protection for sockets generally within the building. And so this is something that I've spoken about before is that lack of RCD protection, sometimes it could be a code two and sometimes it can be a code three. And so that I think is a good example. And so as I say, even though this list is not meant to be exhaustive, that there, there are loads more examples, I really think this does give a good idea as to what sort of things are a code one, code two, or code three. And you may find this useful if you're doing a condition report and you need to, uh, some guidance on which codes to use. And also you may find it useful if you ever get a customer or a colleague who doesn't agree with the codes that you've used. Obviously the IT's on-site guide is a good source of reference that you can refer to in either of those situations. So here are some examples examples of some other changes in the on-site guide since Amendment 2 of the 18th edition was published that don't necessarily relate to changes in Amendment 2. So you may find these interesting. Um, so for example, Section 3.6.1 in the on-site guide now has a list of the different types of RCD. So you've got Type AC, Type A, Type F and Type B. Now these different types of RCDs have been around for some time. Uh, the list previously was in the old regs book but I don't think it was in the on-site guide. Now obviously this is now more of a topic of conversation because there are more requirements about the types of RCD that we use in insulation. But the different types have been around for some time. Um, so that's new in the on-site guide. Another thing that you might notice is there's now a section on inverters generators uh, which is 2.4.4 another thing that you might find interesting that's new in the on-site guide is in figure 4.1 there's now an illustration of the earthing conductor terms which again previously was in the regs book but it wasn't in the on-site guide at least i haven't seen it before in the on-site guide so you may find that useful if you're out on site there's now also uh, in figure 7.5.2 there's an illustration of an isolation transformer that wasn't there before another thing that you'll notice that's changed in the latest version of the on-site guide is the illustrations for the test procedures and you'll notice that all of the illustrations now include um, an image of uh, the lock-off kit so really important to bear this in mind if you're preparing for an exam or or an assessment with a competent person scheme so really important they put that on there now um, and another thing that I've noticed is that there's more of a detailed image of the R1, RN and R2 
testing procedures. And on the testing procedure for R1 plus R2, they've now stopped using the images of the cables twisted together, and they've now started including connector blocks uh, in the images, which I thought was interesting. So as I've said before, there's quite a lot of interesting information in the on-site guide, so I really recommend that you check it out. And bear in mind that not all of the information in here relates to the changes in the latest amendment. There's a lot of information in here that you'll find useful, whether you're preparing for an exam or whether you're out on site, I really recommend that you check it out. Now I talk about changes in Amendment 2 of the 18th edition in a previous video, and if you haven't seen that already, I'll put a link up on the top of the screen. And if you haven't done so already, please click over here to subscribe to my channel.